Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. So I've already posted a couple of videos showing the end results of this piece. So the new Morningstar image that I did that's serving both as my convention banner and I'm eventually going to make it the new cover for the trade of volume one of Morningstar. Welcome to heaven. And I've shown the, the finished completed version of this thumbnail, but I had forgotten somewhere in my files as I was going along that I actually recorded the process of me drawing one of these thumbnails on toned paper. So I came across and said, all right, well, let me let me show you a little bit of the in progress. So we're, we're jumping back in time a little bit. Now, I've got my thumbnails over there to the left, and I believe in one of my previous videos, I actually went through and kind of talked a little bit about my process of thinking out the different variations that I was trying to come up with. So the thumbnails on the left are really me trying to work out composition. Now, when I'm looking at this image here on the right, I'm thinking about value. Now, I have mentioned before that color is not my strong suit. That's why my comics are all black and white. But I do feel that color is an important tool in an artist's toolbox. And as I strive to improve my use in it, the main thing I feel like I need to master first is my use of value. Because if you have your values, your lights and darks masked together properly, if you have the scene lit in a manner that feels coherent and describes the volumes and supports the composition, well, that's half the battle right there. I've honestly found with a lot of pieces, you can just go with the very simple monochromatic color scheme with a few accent colors added on. And other than that, you kind of get exactly what you need. So for me, knowing that I was gonna make this a, a very significant piece for me, an image that I know is going to be both the cover to my series and gonna be my convention banner, I'm gonna put a lot of effort into. And I ended up doing multiple versions of this thumbnail because I wanted to explore different croppings. But in this tonal stage, there were a lot of things that I was thinking about and I wanted to try some, some different approaches in terms of picture making. First off, I usually only draw on toned paper when I'm doing my figure drawing class. And even then, only when we're doing long poses and actually have time, because I feel like with tonal, with, with gray or toned paper, you kind of have to take your time, build up your whites, build up your darks. It's, it takes a little bit more of, it, while some of the work is done for you because your mid-tones, in theory, your, your paper is kind of like helping you by covering some of those tonal values, the mid-tone values already, but the fact that you have to think, instead of working from dark to light, it's like you're working from middle value out to shadow, and then from middle value out to light. And it's a different way of describing the form. And it, you know, it's a little bit of a, a challenge wrapping my brain around that, but my whole point is that doing the, the thumbnail on the tone paper was more of an exercise in trying to, to go for a more painterly approach and try to go less... I tend to go either too dark or I tend to go too light. And working from the middle values, I can kind of like compress my tones a little bit and be try to be a little bit more focused and judicious and only using light where I really need it and only using dark where I really need it. Now, one of the things, as you can see, I moved on to watercolor thumbnails. Part of this is that I kind of trying to go back and forth and make it a little bit of a dance. This is something that I've been doing more and more is instead of just working on one phase of the piece, the color piece, the tonal piece, the thumbnails, I'm starting to do a little bit of tonal studies and then saying, well, what does this tonal study look like in different color compositions? And then go back and do a different tonal study and then see, well, what does that look like if I work out different color compositions like that? Or like this, I'm going back to my black and white sketchbook and saying, all right, the first one that I was drawing was, and the, the color piece to the left of it was more of me doing a full length where in theory his waist is still inside the, uh, the, the image and you're kind of seeing part of his, the part that's in the black inside his coat you would, you know, would be his pants. And then I was like, well, what happens if I crop this image a little bit tighter? It means I'm gonna have to move his arm or bend his arm a little bit more so his gun isn't going off of it. But this right here is another mini tonal study, but this is back to composition. This is back to me saying, well, what is it gonna look like just in terms of the mass shapes, the, the dominant forms, 
the positive space and the negative space. The tiny little thumbnail that's above it is kind of reminiscent of what the first value study and the, the watercolor studies to the left were what I was going for. And wow, I normally only use this sketchbook that I'm, I'm drawing in right now for, for black and white. I don't remember that I would, threw some color in there, but I guess that's, uh, I wanted to maybe play a little bit with painting color on top of the value studies instead of just doing black and white studies and then doing color studies. And this is something that I've been thinking about more and more in terms of I keep saying more and more because I'm always trying to rethink how to do things more efficiently, how to grow and experiment and, and see where I can get better results. And the idea of the contrast between warm and cool colors, between uh, one of the things is that if you have a neutral gray and you add warm to it, it automatically makes the grays feel cooler and vice versa. If you have a predominantly gray image, but you add blue to it, the, the non-blue areas will feel warmer in contrast. So what I'm also trying to look towards, not just in this piece, but also in experimenting in the future with color, is letting the neutral tones, letting the grays do more of the heavy lifting for me simply by them being in contrast to the other colors. I don't necessarily have to go as extreme with the cool colors if the warm colors create that contrast, then I only need a little bit of cool, and then the neutral colors already feel cooler. So it's a weird, interesting balance mentally that I'm playing with. And I think in the previous video when I talked about these before, I also mentioned doing color studies from, you know, taking master studies, but doing them just in terms of working out the color schemes and studying how there are other artists in the past have used color. So that is something I also still need to continue exploring. Not enough hours in the day, but I got to find some time to start doing it because, you know, I'm not going to stop using color. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like and share them. Visit my resources page for free creativity tools and comic books at resources.jeremy.net. That's resources.ger. I -M -I .net. Also, visit my main website, jeremy.net, where you can buy my comic books, art prints, and more. There's also links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media accounts. That's it for now. Go be creative.